all right students so as you know that in the previous class we discussed social enterprise at the end right we discussed about the definition of social enterprise and the different objectives social enterprise uh, or enterprises normally have so now let's discuss the characteristics of social enterprise in detail so that you will be absolutely clear about uh, the nature of such type of business because it is still called a business uh, do you remember that in last time i gave you an example of uh, a business called kashyap foundation operating in pakistan so it's a mix of uh, uh, a charity and social enterprise why because sometimes they ask for donation as well but i but do remember that social enterprise does not ask for donation it is not a charitable institution like for example if i say shaukat khana memorial hospital right it is a charitable hospital and they get donation from all over the world whereas social enterprise they do not rely on charity at all even they do not ask for it okay so that is why maybe you can say that kashyap foundation is a mix of uh, an ordinary business and a social enterprise now let's discuss the characteristic so that you will be made more clear the first characteristic is similar to other businesses as far as operations are concerned now similar to other businesses mean that they have their human resource department they deal with staff they deal with customers they try to reduce their cost so it means they have their operations department where they um, do their main job that could be manufacturing that could be providing service so they perform in the same way as other businesses perform right so there is no difference at all why because their purpose is to satisfy the needs and wants of the people okay and they get a price for it as well in return what i told you when the when the when they get the price they want uh, the main purpose is not to earn profit yes profit is one of their objective but it's not their main objective right and they use majority of the profit for public welfare or to achieve their other objectives we discussed that like people planet okay we'll discuss that in detail in the next slide as well okay now let's discuss the second point okay it competes with other businesses in the market so it means the social enterprise does not operate in isolation it has to compete with other businesses as well why because if why customers would like to buy from a social enterprise rather than buying from an ordinary business obviously they have something unique otherwise again the same goes for social enterprise as well if they won't remain competitive in terms of price in terms of quality okay obviously the customers they would switch to their competitors and those competitors might not be social enterprises so they do compete as well as just like other businesses then strict they strictly follow ethical values while taking decisions now this, this is something different from ordinary businesses now first of all we need to understand what is ethics can anybody tell me what is ethics anyone who knows about it what is ethics morals Mor okay or all, all right so we can say it is linked with morality okay fine basically ethics are those values or these are basically the perception of the people about what is good and what is bad for example if i say that you cannot tell lie so it means if you tell a lie this is unethical but this is not illegal you cannot be sentenced to imprisonment or you cannot be put behind the bars just because you told a lie right it is not illegal but it is unethical according to people's perception it's bad right so uh, we take it this way but when it comes to businesses then ethical values mean that business will not consider only the benefit of the business only they need to consider the effect of their business activity on other people as well and those people can be uh, people living in the community uh, your customers your suppliers 
the bank with which you deal in uh, your staff so it means you need to take care of their interests as well so for example they when they follow ethical values what does it mean i gave the example the other day as well if you use cheap machinery so it might give you the benefit as far as business is concerned right you might be able to reduce your cost because of using cheap machinery but because it affects the environment right and that is not in the interest of the people living nearby the community the society so they won't do it similarly using child labor is cheaper but they won't do it why because again it is not in the public interest children needs to get education so that they can lift their living standard after getting a job somewhere but that is only possible when they get education if you involve involve them in work obviously they cannot get education so you can say rules of morality they are directly linked with ethical values so all businesses they do have ethical values similarly you know that in other countries even if you are actually showing ads of chocolates again you think it's unethical do you know why in pakistan it's not the reason is because uh, it is considered that children or maybe uh, maybe the people who are at a very young age for example 8 years old or 9 years old even 10 years old they do not know what is good and bad for them so that is why if you attract them by showing uh, an advertisement so it is unethical because you are actually enticing somebody who does not know what is good and bad for them so that is why again it's unethical similarly uh, you cannot uh show a competing brand in your advertisement again it is unethical because okay you can show your product in the advertisement and tell the quality of the product but if you are showing or you are downgrading your competitor product this is unethical because people feel that this is wrong this is against the rules of morality so again uh, social enterprises they do not do it similarly charging a very high price from the customers and you know that uh, businesses normally do it when they think that they have a good brand image they have a monopoly and monopoly means that there is no competition in the market so they do it huh, to, in order to get more profit but social enterprises they won't increase their price like charging very unusual price like very high price from the customers uh, which does not reflect uh, the quality of the product so it's wrong it's unethical so again Uh, the social enterprises they do not do it at all okay so they strictly follow it other businesses also follow it but they may not follow it that much strictly because their main objective is profit where wherever in social enterprise i told you yes profit is one of their objective but that is not their main objective their primary objectives are people and planet so planet includes the environment and people includes all sorts of people which uh, have a link directly or indirectly with the business either it's a customer or a community or workers right similarly next point is majority of the profit is reinvested to benefit society so we discussed that and so it's quite easy that they do earn profit but a major chunk of the profit is reinvested for the benefit of the people or for achieving the objective of people and the objective of planet okay and what do they do for example they um, hire people from the community even if the people they are not very skillful they can hire people from other parts of the region as well and they might be more skillful but they think it is a duty to hire people who are, who live nearby they have the first right so they hire people from the community again because they want to give benefit to the community to people so they hire people from there and it's easier for social enterprise to hire them as well why because they because they live uh, nearby so it's very convenient for the people as well but other businesses they they might not like to buy because if they think that maybe the level of skill people have 
uh, does not match with the uh, with the standard they want so social enterprise but it does not mean that they always hire uneducated or unskilled people i am saying that people may have the skill or the education but it may not be up to that standard but still because their focus is the people their primary objective so they go for it um okay similarly uh, they can provide i told you i gave you the example of selco uh, where they provide energy solution to people uh, uh, the people who are very poor who cannot afford electricity or uh, they live in the area Uh, which is underdeveloped and electricity is not available there so they provide them with um some battery light or uh, some cheaper solutions okay then we have profit is not its main objective i told you yes profit is one of the objective of social enterprise but not the main objective do remember that then benefit to society is but remember profit they need to earn profit profit is their one of the objective reason is because they have to use that profit to achieve their other objectives if they won't earn profit there will be no source of earning how can they be able to achieve the objective of people and planet it's not possible because they do not run their business on charity they do not get donations from anywhere so that is why profit is crucial for their success but it's not there to make their owners happy next point is benefit to society is the main objective i told you so benefit to society as a whole or benefit to society on individual level as well like attending those people who are very poor so you target those people who you think that they are deprived of basic necessities so you try to help them out then we have different from charitable institutions why because what is the difference let me ask some of you because uh faria can you tell me why they are different from charitable institution so because charitable institutions collect donations while social enterprise reinvest the money back into their business all right but remember they do not get donations that is the primary difference social enterprise their main source of finance is their profit right whereas the main source of finance for other businesses is their profit that is the main uh, bo sorry both have the main source of income that is profit but the problem is for a charitable institution their main source is the charity which come from comes from many areas or many parts of the country think about shakat khana memorial hospital so they get charity from all over the world right that is their main source yes they do charge for rich patients to get their procedure done right if there is a cancer patient who is well off they do charge an amount and that amount is a heavier one but because majority of the people are poor which are operated which are being operated over there so that is why they require charity to treat them because they cannot pay even a single penny so that is the main difference of so that is why shaukat khanam is not a social enterprise and their objective is not profit at all right whereas in a social enterprise they do have an objective of profit but that objective is to support uh there are other objectives all right let's now talk about this is again a past paper question both were past paper questions and i'm telling you because in the book uh it is not mentioned with so much clarity that is why i discussed the characteristics of social enterprise because sometimes there is an eight mark question about it or there is a 12 mark question so students get confused how to write such a lengthy answer because the book Uh, does not talk much about social enterprise so similarly there is a past paper question about similarities with other types of business let's have a look follows business ethics i told you that these days uh, you know that social media is now um, very efficient and uh, a news actually spreads around very quickly a video goes viral and within a 
minutes so it means now businesses they are concentrating or on uh, business as success well those who are, who are whose main motive is to earn profit but it means but social enterprise their main focus is that whatever they do it should not be unethical i told you what is unethical okay but now businesses they do follow it but do remember businesses follow ethics just because they want to earn profit because they want to earn a good name so that people start buying from them and they can advertise that that they follow business ethics ethics they are a people caring organization they are a community caring organization right so in that way but behind it their objective is profit right but when it comes to social enterprise there is nothing behind it. their main focus is to follow ethics or ethical values why because when they follow it obviously they need to consider the interest of the people as well who are not part of the business okay but this is a similarity both both follow ethics maybe social enterprise uh follows it maybe too extensively whereas businesses they follow it as far as they are able to earn profit if businesses realize ordinary business i'm talking about if they realize that by following ethics their cost will increase and they won't be able to earn profit at all they won't follow ethics right but social enterprises they will follow it all the time doesn't matter how much cost uh is there to do it next is aims to satisfy people by providing them with good quality goods and services that is the object that is uh, the function of both types of businesses either it is a social enterprise or a profit making business whose primary objective is to earn profit because unless and until you satisfy your customers you can't get profit okay and both types of businesses they want to earn profit ordinary businesses they want to earn profit because they want to make their shareholders happy social enterprises they want to earn profit why because they have to use that to achieve their other objectives so for that they have to satisfy people they have to add value right they have to do something so that people stick to their products only they keep on buying from you okay then we have next works for employee welfare to keep them motivated now because i told you that one of the objective of social enterprise is people and employees they come under this category that is people right so that is why they train the staff and they make it sure that employees should not be overburdened for example if the employees are supposed to work 8 hours in a day they should not be forced to work more than 8 hours yes if they are willing to work it's fine because then they will be paid uh, extra for the extra hours worked right but other businesses you know that they actually exploit their workers especially those workers who are needy who are poor they know that there is no way out they won't get employment somewhere else so they have to do um, overtime as well at times but social enterprise their focus is different from them and they uh, give them some benefits as well along with it and they keep a very healthy environment for workers so it's not only about the the time which uh, for which the workers are required to work it's about their salary and wage as well because salary and wage should be comparative as well and should not be too low right because if it is too low we call it this is unethical and you know that social enterprises they cannot perform any activity which comes in the category of uh, uh, being or, or being called unethical right then follows business principles to achieve targets now business principles what are those principles like for example you need to advertise you have to lower your cost as much as possible right to earn profit you need to uh, introduce new technology in your production process so that you can improve your productivity now productivity means i want to ask somebody what is productivity um hira javed can you explain me what is productivity sir uh, productivity is how much output the employees produce okay output produced by one employee this is what we call labor productivity so do remember productivity is different from production 
production means that the total output produced by uh, all the workers where productivity is output produced by one worker let me show it to you in fact to all of you i hope you can yeah, now you can see the screen for example there are 100 employees who are working in a factory okay and 1000 units or let's say 1000 shirts are stitched right by 100 employees so if i want to calculate the so what is the production this is production let me show it to you this is the total production because all 100 employees they are able to produce 1000 shirts so do remember this is production okay whereas productivity is different that is if i write it here productivity that is that is basically output produced by by one worker right output produced by one worker do remember that so in that case if we need to find out the productivity of 100 employees we do it this way the formula is total output total output divided by number of workers okay so the total output is 1000 units divided by 100 employees so it will be how much it will be 10 shirts okay so it means that one employee one employee is able to stitch one shirt sorry 10 shirts okay and this is what we call productivity so i am talking about productivity okay and uh, what is the benefit of having higher productivity because if product productivity goes up and now for example instead of producing 10 shirts one employee is producing 20 shirts so what is the benefit benefit is now you do not need to hire more workers to produce the to produce more output even the same workers will be sufficient so it will save your cost and uh, cost saving is essential to earn profit okay so it means this is one of the principle so for that you can train your workers you can help out your workers you can uh, use technology so that with the help of technology workers can work faster and output uh, can be increased so do remember that productivity is more efficient and you know uh, more um, important because when there is higher productivity it will lead to higher production as well and eventually business will be able to earn higher profit as well so let's get back to the point we were discussing uh, yes i was telling you so it means social enterprise also follows business principles and the basic principle to run any business is you want to reduce your cost so that profit can be increased higher the profit the more successful the business will be so it is there so either you have to train your workers or you have to hire new technology new machinery or you have to change your work practices whatever you do if it you are able to reduce your cost then um you will be able to earn more profit now why i'm not saying higher price you can charge higher price it's fine even for social enterprise but higher price should be justified and it should not be too high right and it should not reflect that you are exploiting people for other businesses it's pretty much fine if you charge any price right for you know that why iphone is so expensive now so their price might not reflect uh, the quality they are offering they are why they are charging that much amount for their iphone why because they have a very good brand image in fact they have a monopoly as far as as far as apple iphone is concerned but social enterprise yes 
uh, they can increase the price if they think that their quality is increasing or now they have more trained staff but it should be within limits it should not be um, it, uh, considered too high okay, then we have strives to make profit as all businesses they uh, want to earn profit so they make uh, efforts to do it and for that we discuss that so you can relate it with the above point as well tries to remain efficient and effective to achieve excellence now okay before i discuss it this uh, let me explain you that both types of businesses strive to earn profit social enterprise and other businesses right but social enterprises they earn profit why because i told you to reinvest in the business for the public welfare whereas other businesses they strive to earn profit to make their shareholders happy to expand their business right okay now this point so there are two terms which which are mentioned here efficient and effective can anybody tell me what is the difference between efficiency and effectiveness uh let me ask bilal jamil bilal do you know about it or no or no idea sir efficient uh, effective uh, effectiveness means the the work uh, which he is he or she is producing should be of good quality okay and what is efficient and, sir efficient for the time uh, the worker can work for okay for how many hour can it work for all right okay okay i'll comment on that zainab any idea Zainab, are you there? Zainab might be having a problem. Razin, any idea? Sir, efficient means to be able to do the task in the required time, while effective means to be able to do the task in the required time while successfully achieving the desired result. Okay, very good, excellent answer, Razin. And normally, um, I believe that. all a level students uh they do not know that, know it they do not know the difference between efficiency and effectiveness and you have made it very clear thank you very much so efficiency when we say the business is efficient it means that they are using their resources in the best possible way so i'll relate it with an example for example you are in the exams and you are supposed to do five questions in two hours for example so now what is your resource your resource is you and the time so when you are able to attempt those five questions within that two hours it means we'll say you are efficient and that means you use the resources in the best possible way so similarly when we talk about business or a factory or a manufacturing concern so when we say this factory is efficient it means they are using the resources in the best possible way it means they are not wasting resources so when wasted uh, sorry resources will not be wasted it will reduce the cost of the business so it means efficiency is directly linked with lowering cost so we can say if productivity increases as i just discussed this concept so productivity if it increases it means efficiency also increases to remember why because productivity will only increase when the workers are able to use the resources either it is time or raw material in the best possible way because the workers they are wasting raw material and every now and then they have to rework their job obviously it will take more time okay and it will take more resources as well so we'll say they are not efficient and it will increase their cost as well because there will be lot of wastage of raw material and they won't be able to meet it On, uh, on time as well okay now efficiency now you understand it is linked with uh, productivity uh, lowering cost okay and using the resources in the best possible way so the example i gave you of the exam so it means you did not waste your time all right the time was your was your resource at that time okay so you managed it very well okay similarly when we talk about effectiveness it means whenever you do something you always set a target first right you can't do anything especially in business uh, without aiming for anything 
or aiming for nothing so in an exam your objective is to attempt those questions successfully right so it's not about time now for example you attempt all the questions within the time and then when the all the questions were checked they were all incorrect for example if it is the case then we'll say you were efficient but you were not effective because the word effectiveness is directly linked with meeting objectives or the targets you set earlier do remember that so it means you will be efficient or an and effective when you finish your questions within the time and all questions are correct also it means you successfully meet the objective in that case so similarly in a business scenario when workers they are using their resources in the best possible way they are uh, not wasting their time they are not wasting the raw material so uh, now and they are meeting the deadlines of the customers as well okay but at the same time the quality they are producing it is also exactly according to the requirements of the customers because if it is not so for example you are meeting deadlines and you and the goods are available for the customers at the right time but customers do not like it because it is not of the same standard they want so we'll say you were efficient but now you are not effective so both are required so social enterprise when we say tries to remain efficient and effective to achieve excellence so and that is how you will be able to achieve excellence you will be a success and you will be able to grow as well so it's not about saving cost only it's about meeting the objective as well so i hope you understand anybody who is still not clear about efficiency and effectiveness i can wait all are clear farhan any issue farhan are you there fazan is it okay yes sir okay all right let's move on okay last point is faces competition and makes efforts to remain competitive so i, I told you earlier that they have to face competition with other firms who might not be social enterprises and for that they have to make an effort and that effort could be either to increase their quality of the product or to improve their service or to reduce their cost or to come up with some attractive design of the product so you have to do something as a social enterprise to compete with other businesses as well and it is a tough ask for them why because they have to consider the interests of the society as well workers as well and consumers as well and along with that they have to remain competitive as well and this is not an easy task for social enterprises okay because other businesses they do not care about the environment or they do not care about the environment in the same way as social enterprises care right so that is why it is a difficult uh, task for them and uh, we are going to discuss it in the next slide about it so this is a past paper question again now you need to understand a very important concept triple bottom line and uh, what is it and why we call it let me show it to you and then you will understand it one is people second is planet third is profit so you understand so triple bottom line is actually the objectives of social enterprise another name given to the objectives of social enterprise is called triple bottom line why we call it triple bottom line because you see there are three objectives okay and all three objectives start from the letter p people social planet environmental profit economic and that is why they are also called p3 right or p cube do remember they are also called p3 and p cube just for the reason because all objectives start from the letter p okay and we have already discussed all these objectives so any uh, confusion regarding these objectives because we discussed that last time but if you are not clear about any of the objective tell me right now so that i can explain any of the objective anyone no issues all right so it's fine now it means 
Okay, let's move on and you have my notes as well. You can read from there as well. Again, it's a past paper question and it's not there in the textbook at all. So that is why that is uh, the edge notes are having on the textbook because textbook might be in detail, but as far as my notes are concerned, you will find the answers of the past papers as well. It is written in such a way. Okay, let's discuss it. Now, conflicts between the triple bottom line objectives. It's a past paper question and what does it say? It says that if when social enterprise tries to achieve one of the objective, they fail to achieve another objective because achieving one of the objective becomes an obstacle to achieve another objective. Let's talk about it, how it happens and why there's a conflict. The most prominent issue faced by social enterprise is how to remain competitive and profitable. You know that one of the objective of social enterprise is to earn profit, right? Now, remember that because they consider the, in, uh, the public welfare and their objective is to take care of people and planet as well. So when they hire expensive machinery instead of cheaper machinery so that it won't pollute the environment, when they hire adults rather than child labor, again, uh, so that children should not be exploited, and this is unethical against the rules of morality. So again, it will increase the cost. So both these activities, either you hire expensive machine, uh, you buy expensive machinery or you hire adults, it will increase your cost, at least in the short run. So now there is a conflict because in the short run, you might not be able to achieve a profit. But right now your target is to achieve the objective of people or planet. So there is a problem. That is why that is that is why, uh, why we say that it is a tough ask for social enterprises to compete with other ordinary businesses because they only have one objective that is profit. Okay, whereas social enterprises they have other objectives apart from profit as well. Now let's see some examples. The decision of not using child labor may increase the cost of the business. I told you, and when cost increases, it reduces the amount of profit earned. So, conflict happens between the objective of people and the objective of profit. If you achieve one objective, the other can't be achieved or difficult to achieve. Now, saying no to cheap machinery to produce goods and services, that pollutes the environment. Again, if you do so, your cost will increase. And again, there is a conflict between the objective of profit and the objective of planet or the environment. So you can give examples as well. So do remember when you are developing a point, you can come up with some such um, examples as well to elaborate your point. Okay. So you can get um, full marks for analysis as well. Okay. Any question? Anyone who is not clear about how conflict happens between the triple bottom line objectives? So all are, all are clear? Okay, so that is the end of chapter number one. I told you, today we'll finish that. Okay, so now what, what you will do, because now this is the last class and my next class is on Wednesday. So now you have to read the whole chapter. Notes are with you. You know that, the soft copy I shared in the group. So you are supposed to read all it, all the concepts which are there and then see the questions as well. Although in my next class, I will discuss few of the past paper questions which are there at the end of the chapter in my notes, few of the questions, okay? Uh, and you can come up with your own questions as well. Sir, I am not able to answer this question or I do not understand this question, okay? Because after that, if you won't come up with questions, well, I will discuss few of the questions and I'll give you an assignment as well regarding certain questions, okay? And after that class, we'll move on to the next chapter. All right, so good luck for your uh, result. And today I think it's better to stop here because starting a new chapter won't be uh, a better choice because right now the uh, the result is right there and it is approaching. So I, I'll stop today and I'll see you in the next class. Thank you very much.